In March 2020, India came to a grinding halt. And while we were coming to terms with our new reality, India's invisible workforce that quietly drives the economy was facing a crisis. The cab driver, the newspaper guy, the house help, the factory worker, millions of migrant workers, the people who not just build our homes but our entire lives, left without work, cash and food. More so, left without the dignity of anyone knowing where they were and how they were, till they started walking. The visuals left us asking, why didn't we know better? We should have. But the truth is, even today, we know little about migration within our own borders. In a country where close to 30% people migrate, shifting villages, cities and states to earn a living, not having an understanding of who goes where, when and why impedes our ability to plan for the welfare of around 400 million migrant Indians. Omidyar Network India presents the Indian Express Think, decoding India's internal migration. A series of solution-oriented conversations with thought leaders to discuss discuss key issues that enable us to know better and plan better and most importantly help us improve the economic and social conditions of our migrant workforce the workforce that keeps us going uh, good evening everyone on behalf of the indian express group a very warm welcome to the indian express think series on migration presented by Omidyar Network India. IE Think is a thought-provoking forum that brings together policymakers, corporate leaders, and thought leaders to encourage a substantive exchange of ideas and get the best minds to give it direction and solutions. Uh, previously, this migration series has focused on the need for research and for tracking of migration data. It has also addressed the responsibilities of the governments, both in the home and the destination states of the migrant workers, as well as the health crisis that affects the migrant workers. Uh, today, our focus will be on how to mainstream the concerns of migrant workers. Uh, uh, the session will host a special keynote interview and an insightful panel discussion will follow. Uh, please join me in welcoming our guests today. Firstly, uh, we have with us uh, Sonu Sood, uh, actor and philanthropist. He will be interviewed by Anand Goenka, Executive Director, Indian Express Group. Uh, the panelists on the discussion that follow will include Archana Garodia Gupta, former President Fiki Flo and former National Chair Fiki MSME Committee, uh, Vinod Kapri, journalist and filmmaker, Ranjana Kumari, Director of uh, Center for Social Research, Atul Satija, Founder 2.0 and CEO Give India. The session will be moderated as usual by Udit Mishra, Deputy Associate Editor, The Indian Express. I would request all of you to please remain connected throughout the session on social media. Uh, you can use the hashtag migration in India. And before we proceed, though, we would like to show you a short video clip on India's migration from the Omidya Network India. So let's take a look at that. <music> Request Anand Goenka and Sonu Sood to please join us for the keynote interview. Thank you. Thank you, Pooja. Sonu, very warm welcome to the Indian Express. Um, I have to say it's been extremely tough to get through to you. I think all our reporters, uh, we've tried in every which way, uh, but we finally did manage because I think understandably, you know, you have been literally for the last one and a half years, you haven't stopped helping people and you've been constantly on the phone uh, you know, just coordinating, uh, you know, magical things, really. 
uh, for, for almost last one and a half years. You've even in the process started the Sonu Sood Foundation. Um, some so you kind of made like helping people in this last one and a half years. Uh, you kind of made that your life's purpose. Uh, something that not many other actors do. Um, so so welcome to the show. But you know, uh, did you expect such a big change would happen in one and a half years for you? First of all, thank you so much, Anand, for having me today and uh, making me a part of the Indian Express family. And apologies if I was not able to uh, connect uh, with with your guys. I think there was some kind of a huge traffic of a lot of people, lot of calls that keep on coming uh, uh, non-stop. So I must have missed somewhere. So I, I'm sure you know if we are journalists must have connected with some migrants somewhere living in Bihar. So it would have been easy to connect here. So no, kaha, yeah, I would have been there. For <laughs> Uh, but you know, today when I was just coming up, uh, the building, there were a lot of people standing at my gate and they said, Sir, aaj milke nahi gaya. you know, there are a lot of problems. I said, you know, I have another a very important meeting lined up. So just write your problems on a uh, on a piece of paper and I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. But um, like you said, Anna, I think, um, you know, when I've seen those videos, those visuals that uh, you just played, it's, it's such a nice feeling to see those smiles, those people who um, uh, you're never going to meet ever in your life. You haven't met them. But you know that, you know, the kind of hardships they face, you know, leave their families, they, they travel to different states, um, earn their living, save, you know, a bit, then they send back to their families. So most of the people in, in this country are living um, like that. And I connected with um, millions, you know, in the last one and a half years. So um, I would say I um, it's, it's a blessed feeling. Uh, it's kind of a, uh, a feeling of reinventing yourself. And uh, I can promise you, I can go on record and say that, you know, in the last um, one and a half years, the kind of happiness that I've achieved, um, uh, it, it's much more than uh, 19 years of career as an actor working in all different languages. So I think it's, it's, it's very special. That's a wonderful thing you said and gives me a great segue. You know, I, we, we just, we put together a small video. If I can ask the uh, team to just play that, it's a very short video. Um, but it just remind, you know, I was researching for this interview as usual last minute. And I just remembered that sooner the last time the Indian Express group interacted with you was back in 2014. And this was that, you see the photographs, this was at the Screen Awards. Yeah. Uh, and we had you coming, you know, in this bike and you, you know, this bike jumped through glass, you shattered glasses and you caught on fire and you came on stage, you took your leather jacket off and, you know, uh, sort of uh, started to dance and... Uh, you know, and then you, and then, then Shah Rukh Khan convinced you to take your vest off as well. So you were topless at the on stage at Screen Awards, uh, and 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 this is you know, and 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 this is you now, right? This is you. Uh, you know, you are you are just so uh, re, you know, you're just so relatable. You're you're just somebody who's got so much heart, um, and you know, I think in 2014 when this when I, when I remember the Screen Awards happened. Um, you know, you you were you were building this image of this actor, this 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 uh, you know this man who can make audiences laugh and cry, and you know can 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 dance and do action and do everything, um, and that certainly got you that got you far. It it, it got you to a certain point. Uh, you know, you did become a household name, but you know now the last one and a half years, it is not the superhero. It's not the star that's big that that that's gotten you this kind of adulation it is just the human being it is sonu sood the the big heart uh, that's actually got your face on a on an aircraft that's got your play that's got your faces all over buses they have people doing you know aarti to you all over the country um, and, and 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 it is all this just being a human being uh, which i think has also in a sense has made you i believe uh, the, the the most sought after brand endorsement uh, you know candidate now in the country as well so so this so this whole transition um, i mean i don't think anybody was expecting this were you um no i, I was not expecting this uh, Anand, i remember when i started my journey no no back it is ask you to talk a little bit louder please if possible yeah sorry apologies um you know i i remember when uh, the whole journey started uh, uh, you know uh, uh, with the migrants i never thought that you know it's going to um, grow, uh, you know, so many folds and I, I'll be able to connect with so many lives uh, in the last one and a half years. Um, but like, it's, uh, you know, my, my mom always used to say uh, a quote that, you know, Ki jo mein saath mein khada, wohi sabse bada. 
so uh, i i i could uh, relate to that you know i've, lo- I've lost my parents but uh, i wish they were around to see what i was doing i think there's some kind of a guiding force that's guiding me to do what i'm doing right now um yeah, but i i remember you know like you said about the brand endorsements when i was doing a, you know my movies as an actor okay you are part of a 100 crore movie or a 200 crore film so you feel yaar bada acha lagta hai very nice but it's it's all um uh, very temporary it it's uh, uh, you know uh, like you know if if, I, if we um, get a liver transplant surgery done and it's a successful uh, one so i feel very happy and it's happening every single day you know some there's a kidney transplant surgery is happening some there brain tumors bmds law of things so um, you you find that happiness every single day and you know that you are um you're riding um uh, on on lost prayers and wishes across the globe whether you've met those people or not but someone somebody saying yaar acha ho iska yaar kuch acha ho and that guides you to move ahead in life and um, you know when i uh, was an actor i was doing uh, uh, you know movies so i remember a lot of brands used to come uh, to me and sometimes they used to beg me yaar boss acche to hain par kahin wo image jo jaise hame chahiye brand ko to wo hum dhoond rahe hain wo talash kar rahe hain wo bani nahi bani so i i always used to wonder yaar uh, you know if you play a negative role so okay that's only for the camera you know whatever you want to do in real life that's something separate but i i think then um, you sign stay um, bands and you know they have a, a different thing to say but i i have learned a lesson um, uh, which i want to share with every listener today there's um, nothing more special than uh, touching your soul uh, connecting with an individual that uh, you're never going to meet ever in your life i think that smile that prayer um somewhere in some part of the country will do a magic that no one can do even you can't do for yourself so i i i uh, experienced that and i would say that you know it's important to uh, do something right in life now you know it's just i think you know we've always been told in school and you know we we hear from uh, from older people in our families about giving without expecting anything in return um and i and, and that's exactly what i think you have done you you you've just given and not expected anything in return but i but i want to just come back to this because this is i think the the part of the conversation we're trying to have here um is you know the 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 the, the success you receive as a superhero uh, and the success you received as a simple human being uh, i mean it's fa- you you'll agree that you have maybe gone much further being a su- a simple human and not being a superhero is that fair to say yeah of course i would say a, a common man is a superhero today you know if if people can relate to it if people can connect the cords uh, i think then you are a superhero uh, like i always say that you know what the life now i'm leading is uh, it has uh, uh, you know no lights no camera only action so that's what i feel today uh, and uh, uh, you know um, it, it's very strange anand you know when i i remember uh, as a kid when i my my, my dad had a, a shop in moga in punjab where uh, you know i was born brought up and uh, we used to have a langar which punjabis have you know every uh, week we used to distribute uh, halwa puri and all these things so i was a kid and i also used to stand next to my dad you know giving halwa puri and whatever langar used to have so in in that crowd if someone was struggling to get uh, uh, you know his share of uh, you know halwa i used to be very happy and i said yeah it's kya khas badi baat hai isko mil gaya na so i used to wonder but now i uh, you know realize that a uh, moment you know how important it is to uh, help someone go out of your way and uh, the kind of happiness that you can uh, give to a soul it, it, it's it's we can't put in words so um, yeah i'm i'm experiencing that every single day i'm uh, inventing myself and i'm learning every single day but the, you know the reasons uh, sonu we wanted you and and only you today to have this conversation uh, uh, you know uh, to to kick us off is because what you have done is you have mainstreamed the plight of the migrant right uh, you have humanized them you have put the spotlight on them and what's interesting is that you you did it i'm sh- you know you 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 did it uh, with all the right intentions you, and you did it you know just uh, for for the purpose of 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 contributing and and trying to help but what's happened is it has it has created a certain uh, um sort of national sort of sex appeal if i can say in 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 kind of you know doing good uh, or in kind of looking out for for these people i you know you're being modest and i i'm going to embarrass you a little bit but i want want the audiences to know uh, we, we dug out an article that the financial express did in in february sonu since in the last one and a half years is now endorsing 
uh, Acer, Show Me, Sham Steel, Ludo King, Bush, Oyo Room, Spice Money, Dr. Reddy's, um, Spice Jet, uh, As It Is Nutrition, Krishna's Herbal, uh, Milk and Dairy, uh, 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 the Milk and Dairy brand Shridhi, Royal Green, Adrol Engine Oil. I mean, this is a really long list of brands uh, th that he's doing. So, so he's so he's kind of you, you've kind of mainstreamed it and you kind of made it, uh, you know, something that people want to aspire to do. Uh, you know, just beyond for just just beyond the, the purpose of actually just giving and doing, um, which which brings me to the point of you know, of film, cinema, TV, all our sort of mainstream communication. You know, I look if you look back you will see that they have always spoken about the migrant workforce in a fairly, you know, uh, denigrated way, right? Uh, if you see in so many of our scripts, you know, the, the, the knocker, the driver, the maid, you know, the way, the way that they talk about them, the way that they look down in the, in the, in the, in the conversation. Uh, I, I think I particularly remember once passing, I was somehow Kapil Sharma was playing my background and, you know, Something was said on the lines of, you know, uh, so I think there's, a, there's this, and, and, you know, and then the canned laughter follows. So, so there's certain, uh, you know, in the mainstream communication, we have, we have to a sense dehumanized, uh, you know, and kind of looked down on the migrant workforce. Would you agree? Um, to an extent, yes, and I remember, you know, I'll just uh, uh, share an example. Uh, we, we we get, uh, you know, a lot of, sometimes you have a problem with the plumbing uh, thing in our place or some electrician. So, we chalk pe jate the, you know, at some scale, we'll call an electrician or thoda tha, theek karke jata tha, and, you know, he used to finish his job or sometime next time we go, a different electrician is there. So, they never have an, uh, had an uh, identity. So, when I was sending all these people back to their homes, I used to ask them, ki, yaar, boss, wapas kab aoge? So people said, if there is a job, we will come back home. No, sir, we will stay in the village. Because at that time, uh, when, the, when the whole uh, when the pandemic started, so no one was aware actually, you know, whether it's going to end, whether, uh, you know, they're going to stay in their villages, whether they'll be able to reach safely back to their homes. So it was a very, um, uh, you know, uh, tough situation for these guys. And uh, when I used to ask them, sir, we will do something there. So I, when, I, when I used to come back home every day, I thought that, it's going to be a big problem of employment when we are going to generate, uh, when everything is going to get back to normal. Because, you know, the, the families won't allow their kids to go, ki our boss, bacha bahar mat jao, you know, it's very calm, karo, kuch ar. Aur agar wahan pe rahenge, so how are they going to generate uh, the income for their, um, uh, you know, for the living? So I started a platform called Pravasi Rozgar at that time, where I thought ki I need to give them an identity. Ki har ek jo bhi labor hoga, desh mein, Bihar, UP, MP, Rajasthan, kahi pe bhi ho, kahi pe bhi ja ra ho. Identity mujhe hai. So I started working on that. So at that time, a lot of players you know, in the market who were, uh, you know, uh, they are doing well. They said, you are doing a lot of good migrants se jude hua hai. So can we join hands and can we do some big business? And I, I could smell that it's only pure business and my intention is not to do business, but to change life. So we started on the thing and then we, then later Pravasi Dozgar became a good worker when, you know, uh, Tamasek came and worked. So my intention was to give them end-to-end uh, uh, -end hand holding. So if a migrant from Bihar wants to go to, uh, you know, Bombay and work, it's not you gadi pakad the Bombay aata and oh, job ki talash shuru karta. You know, we'll make sure that you have a, um, uh, a number where uh, you will uh, know in which factory you're going to go. You will have a code. We'll take care of your health. We'll take care of your stay. We'll take care whether you're getting proper food or not. So that's we started with good work. End-to-end uh, -end hand holding ki. Uh, uh, if, if someone is sitting in any part of this country, from Jammu Kashmir to Kanyakumari, you name a state, you name a district, you name a smaller pocket. So we have our people there. We, they make sure that they, they train you to do it. Today, a plumber doesn't want to do plumbing. He wants to become an electrician. So we train them to become an electrician on our thing without charging anything. And we make sure we place them in the best of uh, companies. We give them an option. We make sure that they don't exploit their salary. They should stay in their salary. That's what we are doing. Uh, and with Good Worker, almost we have created a job for 2, 2 lakh 39, 40,000 people in last. And, and our target is to connect with almost uh, 10 million people in uh, next three years. So I think uh, uh, this is all the wishes and prayers of, prayers of these people uh, that are doing the trick. 
but the best part is you know all these people who have got these jobs and they are experiencing that uh, you know a different work culture though they are migrants but they the a different respect they are, they have got a proper place to stay a proper food so they um, you know they become our uh, messengers they said here main boss wahan se aaya hu aur you know i'm working in chennai boss yahan pe khane ka bhi bahut acha arrangement hai aur you know stay ka bhi acha arrangement so then they connect and we, we change their life so i feel uh, it's high time that not only us every individual should give them the respect they deserve aur mera ye ki you know was a, a big uh, uh, driving force to help these migrants boss when they were walking uh, on the roads so uh, you know we all were sitting in our homes and uh, you know offices whatever we were doing so mujhe laga ki you know jin logon ne hamari sadke aur hamare ghar banaye you know aaj wo sadkon par aa gaye hain apne gharon mein jaane ke liye so i'm not going to let them walk um with their little kids back to the family so i'm definitely going to try my level best and I'll make sure till the last mile reach is back to the home i'm not going to stop so that's the pledge that i made when the whole movement started and yes i made sure that the last mile uh, reached the home wonderful sonu very you know really profound and inspiring uh, i'll ask i'll ask the last question and then i'll i'll ask the audiences because i know there are many people who want to also have a quick chat with you uh and we don't have we don't have much time and we have a we have a very uh, we have an awesome panel after this um and they're all all already they all uh, here you know this i i just want to come back to your industry and i uh, and i'm 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 trying to i'm going to try to push you a little bit on this you know, how can we what can we do what can you do in your industry what would you recommend to your friends and colleagues in uh, in tv in cinema you know how do we create a national consciousness where we are not taking our plumber our driver and our you know street cleaner for granted uh, rather than that you know we are actually just showing gratitude and we are actually expressing and we are communicating in a way where we you know just appreciate the work uh, that that the construction worker who was you know who is on a daily wage and has traveled you know hours or across three states to come and work here how do we show how do we create a national consciousness of showing gratitude uh, to these people you know i uh, uh, it will take time uh, and i feel it it's going to take time because everyone gets busy in their own thing we we employ only the people we need uh, sometimes we need just three people in a house we said yaar team ko rakho but this is the time to keep an extra guy so that you can generate that kind of employment you know people are um, you know uh, they they are uh, you know uh, filtering those uh, employees you know they people are becoming jobless the best of best people you know they come to my gate to me सर मैं पायलट हूँ सर मैं करना चाहता हूँ एंड आई फील वेरी सैड मैन दीज गाइज यू नो डिजर्व सम काइंड ऑफ यू नो पोजिशन वेर दे गेट इन इमेजिन नॉर्मल वर्कर अ प्लम्बर और अ इलेक्ट्रिशियन यू नो ही आई मीन इन अ डेस्परेट सिचुएशन वेर इज नॉट गोइंग टू गेट एनी काइंड ऑफ हेल्प सो आई थिंक ऑल द प्रिवेज वंस ऑल मे बी फ्रॉम आई इंडस्ट्री और यू नो कॉर्पोरेट वर्ल्ड आई थिंक यू नीड टू टेक दैट एक्स्ट्रा स्टेप एंड मेक श्योर that we employ one extra employee in our circle so that we generate that kind of an employment uh, we, we all know that you know people are suffering and uh, there's a lot of uh, insecurity uh, among um, you know the families they don't have anything to eat so i think uh, the privileged one they 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 need to do that yes uh, i'm going to ask um, uh, siddharth notial um, who's uh, with the omidyar network in india Siddharth, if you have a comment or a question that you'd like to kick us off with, uh, yes, I do. Thank you, Anna. And uh, Sonu, this is super work that you're doing. Super inspiring, and thank you for it. My question is: a lot of what you've done has been pretty much single-handed, and it's very inspiring what you've managed. Uh, if you had or if if the if the country had a chance to stand behind you investors the press civil society if we could start working with you to strengthen your mission what could we do um i i i wish that could happen yeah it's 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 so um, tempting to do so many things but you know um, there are limited resources you know that you have to follow a few uh, guidelines you have to follow a few protocols so i just try to um, uh, Uh, you know create new paths when when i when i think about something i i need to do you know oxygen plants so i i try to um, make a way you know all these um, is it not all these brands what anand shared uh, 
you know when they when they approach me the only thing i said yaar um, okay meri fees ki baat chodo pehle batao ki hum log kya logon ke liye kar sakte what how can we do um, uh, help someone i'll give you an example this one um, organization in uh, andhra a very big one so they were celebrating their 22 years and initially they had honored the um, you know, president vice president so a lot of people they said ki sunu you have done a great job and uh, uh, you know we would like to honor you with some uh, a trophy or you know in, in andhra they give a uh shawl kind of a thing so uh, when can we do that so i said we'll do it sir please do um uh save two lives for me in anywhere uh, across the country uh, you know i do uh, surgeries in all the hospital almost 137 140 hospitals across the country so just do sir save two lives for me anywhere you choose the hospital you choose the patient i'll send you the list and you know i think that will be very uh, inspiring you know i have got many trophies at my place you know it will be one more lying uh Uh, on the on the shelf. So, but if I see the trophy when when we save a uh, life of an Ageshwar Rao in in Hyderabad or someone in um, you know um, um, Nellore or some place, so I will feel very happy. And and they said this is very nice. So let's do it. And we saved two lives: uh, a liver transplant surgery and a, a brain tumor surgery. And I was very happy. And I I uh, and they said, sir, this is go- uh, going to be our mission next every every year when we do uh, honor someone that we we are going to do this. so i would say you know if if we all come together it's it's going to be different god for sure but the only thing is we get busy in our own lives you know tomorrow i might get busy in my movie acting i you know everyone gets busy in their own daily routine and we forget somewhere you know someone is still struggling somewhere the the, the thought comes only when we see that uh, individual suffering are yaar wo bada dekho road pe badi iski takleef hai aur phir jab wo signal shuru hota hai hamari gaadi aage nikal jati hai then phir another call comes and we get busy in the room so so i feel um, uh, we need to uh, underline that problem and uh, you know uh, address that problem and make sure ki aaj maine ek zindagi bachayi maine ek kisi ki padhai karwai maine kisi ko uh, i've done something right in life so i think that should be an everyday mission maybe a smaller one uh, depending on uh, you know uh, the kind of access we have but i think uh, that's the need of the hour now uh so we've got a couple of questions and i'm i'm going to encourage uh, any questions please post it on the chat box and i uh, will get notified of them uh Uh, so if anybody in the audience have any questions and if anybody in the, on the panel um we have an awesome panel here so um if anybody in the panel wants to sort of make a comment just if you can uh, either raise your hand or just or just just interrupt me just uh, turn just unmute and ask um i've got one space specific question from an audience uh, who's not identified who's not given his last name the pankar he's asking you know he's asking about the financing he's asking you know is it has it been easy has it been difficult where does the money come from is it all yours how much of it is raised how much of it do you plan on you know uh, keep funding yourself so 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 a broad question on the financing of all the activities that you're doing right so the banker um, uh, when when i started the whole thing uh, you know if i would say uh, if i would uh, you know announce that i'm going to send migrants back to their homes so no one is going to believe here yeah, lockdown laga hua hai jab bahar allowed hai nahi to kahan jaoge aap uh, you know kar so i um, knew that it's it's a mission that has to be handled on your own and you have to go all out so i have a friend and uh, i said to you need you to hum log kuch aisa karna chahte hain he said kaise karega you know it's not possible so it's a let me try and if i make that happen it, it it's going to be massive so um uh, you know it 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 took me 2 3 days to get those permissions done um, 10 buses um, we, you know we got them uh, organized we sent 350 people back to their homes but that was such a satisfying experience ki, बोला कि यार ये कहानी 350 लोगों की नहीं है हजारों लाखों लोगों की है एंड दिस इज हाउ द होल जर्नी स्टार्टेड बट आई नो इट 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 वोंट लास्ट फॉर लॉन्ग बिकॉज़ यू नो पूरा देश आपके पीछे लग गया यू नो पीपल आर कॉलिंग हंड्रेड थाउजेंड्स ऑफ कॉल्स आर कमिंग मैसेजेस मेल्स एंड हाउ टू हैंडल इट बट देन सम वे पीपल स्टार्टेड जॉइनिंग इन समवन सेड कि यार मैं पानी भेज दूं आपको यू नो कैन आई सेंड वाटर समवन सेड कि मैं खाना भेज देता हूं बसेस के लिए समवन सेड can i sponsor four four uh, seats in the bus can someone said can i sponsor half a bus can i sponsor one bus so this is how people started joining it and the workforce uh, became huge um, all the endorsements that i do whichever you see every endorsement is somewhere connected with doing a social work like paint band paint ka brand aayega so i said let's paint 20 villages light brand aayega let's light up 20 villages so that's my request to them we have done so many things only through channelizing things एक बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट चीज मैंने सीखी थी पांडे की समन आस्मी कोस ऑफ माइन आस्मी की यार सुनो तू कैसे कर लेता है यार यू नो तू क्या बहुत पैसे आएंगे तेरे पास यू नो 2 मिनट के अंदर आधे घंटे में बस पहुंच जाएगी 1 घंटे में कंसंट्रेटर पहुंच जाएगा हाउ डू यू डू इट सो आई सेड यू नो आई नेवर थिंक ट्वाइस बिफोर कॉलिंग समवन आई डोंट नो 
फॉर समन आई डोंट नो यू नो आई आई यू नो यू थिंक ऑलवेज की यार मैं आनंद को जानता हूँ मुझे अगर किसी का काम करना तो आनंद को फोन करूँ ना करूँ यार बिजी होगा रात होगी दो बजे या यू नो शोर डिस्टर्ब है नॉट बट इफ आई कॉल हम आनंद है बहुत सॉरी बहुत मैं एक बंदे के लिए फोन कर रहा हूँ मैं इसको जानता नहीं हूँ बट यू हैव टू हेल्प एम यू हैव टू सेव अ लाइफ एंड वेन दैट हैपन्स दैट गिवस यू कॉन्फिडेंस कि आप किसी को भी फोन करो इवन इन द सेकेंड वे वन आई वॉज डूइंग कॉलिंग एवरी फ्रॉम टॉप ओनर ऑफ द हॉस्पिटल टू द एम डी टू द डॉक्टर्स टू द वार्ड बॉयज तो जो रजिस्टर पे एंट्री करता है उसको भी मैं वीडियो कॉल पे कॉल करता था कि बॉस बैग चाहिए बॉस किसी को दिला सो दैट्स द प्रोसेस दैट आई बीन डूइंग आई डोंट नो हाउ लॉन्ग आई विल बी एबल टू कंटिन्यू बट आई जस्ट यू नो स्टार्टेड अ फाउंडेशन व्हिच इज अ फ्यू मंथ्स बैक कॉल्ड सू चैरिटी फाउंडेशन सो द आईडिया वाज टू कीप दैट थिंग यू नो ट्रैवल अक्रॉस द जनरेशन के सोनू रहे ना रहे लेकिन सू फाउंडेशन शुड कीप ऑन हेल्पिंग पीपल सो इट्स जस्ट अ जर्नी लर्निंग एवरी सिंगल डे Uh, Vinod uh, Kapri, you probably know him. Obviously, he's a, a filmmaker, journalist. I'm sure you've interacted before, so I won't waste time introducing the two of you to each other. But Vinod had a comment. Please, Vinod ji. Yeah, so no. First of all, you have done a lot of things. But my question is, you have been in this industry for so many years. You have been part of this industry for so long. I just wanted to understand that last year or this year, both years. और सोनू सूद इंडस्ट्री से क्यों नहीं पैदा हुए क्यों नहीं इंडस्ट्री से और लोग निकल के आए सोनू सूद जैसे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विनोद भाई थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन एंड एंड आई आई रियली प्राउड ऑफ यू यू आपकी जो फिल्म दैट कनेक्टेड ऑन थिंक फिनोमिनल वी नीड फिल्मेकर्स आपने बोला ना सर बहुत सारे सोनू सूद क्यों नहीं आए तो बहुत सारे विनोद भाई क्यों नहीं आए जिन्होंने सोचा कि वो तो माइग्रेंट्स बहुत मुश्किलों से जा रहे थे इतने किलोमीटर्स गाड़ियां चला के साइकिल्स चला के बट आई वुड सी विनोद भाई फर्क नहीं पड़ता कि और uh, लोग आए ना आए मुझे लगता है कि हम लोग हमेशा ये इस बात का इंतजार करते हैं कि और कौन जुड़ेगा या किसी ने मेरी तारीफ की नहीं की या किसी ने मुझे फोन किया नहीं किया या लोग क्या बोलते हैं आपके बारे में मुझे लगता है कि जब आप जंग के लिए निकल ही पड़े हैं तो पीछे मुड़ के नहीं देखना चाहिए कि कितने लोग लो आपके साथ आ रहे हैं उस जंग जीतने के लिए आई थिंक यू जस्ट नीड टू फॉलो योर इंस्टिंग्स एंड मूव हेड बट आई विश यू नो कि और बड़ी मूवमेंट हो सकती थी और बहुत सारे लोग जुड़ सकते थे बट आई एम श्योर जो भी uh, लोग काम कर रहे होंगे कहीं ना कहीं से शायद दे मस्ट बी डूइंग देयर बेट देयर ओन वे बट द इम्पॉर्टेंट मैसेज वॉज कि ये पता लगाना बड़ा जरूरी था जो uh, जो दुनिया ने हमें यू नो एक्टर्स बनाया स्टार्स बनाया सुपर स्टार्स बनाया यू नो अपने शायद खाना कम खाया होगा लेकिन हम लोगों के लिए टिकट्स खरीदे होंगे हमारे थिएटर्स फुल किए होंगे सो आई फील कि उनको कहीं ना कहीं हाथ थामना बड़ा जरूरी था मैं यू नो मेरी मदर हमेशा एक चीज़ बोलती थी कि कभी अपनी मुट्ठी खोल के तो देख शायद तेरी हाथ की लकीरों में किसी की जान बचाना लिखा हो सो हमें वो मुट्ठी खोलनी बड़ी जरूरी थी इट्स वेरी ईजी टू यू नो टॉक अबाउट कि यार बड़ी दुख है बहुत दुनिया में बड़े माइग्रेंट्स बहुत सफर हो रहे हैं But I think जब आप बाहर आते हैं तो एक अलग फीलिंग होती है बट आई एम श्योर यू नो दीज लास्ट फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन मंथ्स हैव टॉट ऑल ऑफ अस मोर अबाउट ह्यूमैनिटी एम्पटी एंड आएंगे धीरे धीरे सब लोग बाहर आएंगे Okay, we're quite. Uh, I mean, we are. We're supposed to end at six thirty with and and let Sonu go, but we're, I'm getting a lot of questions. So can I just ask? Uh, can I ask Deb Mukherjee and Vijayata Panjwani? If you can both, uh, can, can we see them and can they can, can they ask a question live? Yes, it would be possible. Just putting it together. Yeah. If I can ask both Vijayata and Dev to just keep uh, just keep it short and just uh, yeah, please just go ahead and we I will take it at the same time. So we so if Dev can start and then we'll go to Vijayata. Well, uh, Soluji, I think first. Uh, warmest congratulations to you for all that you have been doing and that you will be doing but uh, i have a query uh, that the welfare of citizens is ultimately uh, the responsibility of the government and it appears to me that the government has been largely missing in action particularly last year and even this year with your experience on the ground experience would you have any advice for the government of india and for the government of this this states 
on how to deal with the migrants. I mean, what happened last year, both in terms of their walking back thousands of miles or kilometers yeah, and yeah. Uh, no, no support system was shocking for the nation's conscience. Your advice, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dev. And uh, uh, Sunu, before you answer, I'll ask you, I'll take another question also from Vijayata Panjwani. It's a good question. It's a very pertinent question, I think. Vijayata? Vijayata, are you with us? Okay, I'll just read it out then. Uh, yes, uh, I, I couldn't unmute earlier. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, sir, it's a big deal for a student like me to have a live conversation with you. So I just wanted to ask that what can I as a student do to make migrant laborers more comfortable and aware about the process of vaccination? Um, first, I'll ask Vijeta, then I'll come to Dave. So um, Vijeta, um, you can be a part of my foundations and you can guide us also to do something right. So we are always there for you. But yes, yeah, vaccination is a big uh, challenge, you know, convincing people uh, still, a lot of people still think that it's not really uh, needed and it's very important to get them vaccinated. So I think we as individuals, you know, all people, we should uh, take a responsibility of five, 10 people, every family should take and make sure we get them vaccinated. It's very, very important. So, um, uh, and uh, yeah, you can start today doing something right. And um, if, you, if you have any uh, projects or if you uh, want to, us to be part of you. We are always there for you. You can please connect with us anytime. Um, and um, to Dave, you know, Dave, um, uh, very important question. That was my experience in, in the whole process. You know, when I was sending people back to the homes, so there was a lot of permissions required. If you're sending um, 300 people, uh, so uh, the process was all 300 people should be tested, uh, COVID test, and then every single individual, someone is from Bandra, someone is from Andheri, Palgar, Vasai, anywhere. So that local domestic police station has to give permission as per the address for them to travel. And then the district or the state they are going from that particular district uh, area, you have to get a local permission and uh, the travel permissions and everything. So it was a huge process. I, I got into it. I started getting permissions. I was following up with the DMs, ADMs, you know, transport people, states. Uh, and I was following up every 15, 20 minutes. We are boss Dudu. I used to get a um, a screenshot of their uh, emails, you know, when it was sent from a DCP office from Thana to uh, ADM in uh, Lucknow, then to DM in Lucknow, their screenshots and you send to sir, you check your WhatsApp, check I have a screenshot of your email, ka. you know, you have got that email, hey, yeah, mil gaya, mil gaya. So, yeah I'm, I'm just sending, I'm just approving it. So uh, initially it was very, very difficult to convince them. But slowly when the whole uh, movement started, then they, uh, everyone in the world knew, okay, there's one individual who's trying to help them. So uh, permission jaldi hone lage. So then they used to ask me, you know, you to aisa piche lage ho ki jaise aap apni family ko bhej ho. So I said, ki, sir, yeah, main apni family ko bhej ho. Bada important. And I, I uh, you know, I need to do that. So I would uh, request, you know, uh, agar zindagi mein kabhi dubara aisa mauka na hame dekhne ko mile aise halat. But government ko agar um, hota to I think there, there are important uh, times where you need to break those protocols. Jaise bolte na ki jab pandemic aaya to naye rules banti hai, naye policies banti hai. To kuch protocols todne bhi padte hai, jaane bachane ke liye bada important. So I was sitting with one of the um, um, CMs on, on that day. He said ki yaar kaise bhechhu to mein ko kaise states ki permission lete ho, uh, flights from uh, abroad se bula lete ho, landing permission mil jati hai, ambassador embassies kaise, you know how are you doing that? So I said, sir, you can walk for 4 migrant to walk for 4 days. He said, Kya? How, how are you going to do that? So I said, you know, these migrants are walking back to their uh, homes. You can't stop them. You can't go to the road. I 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 can't go to the road. But these guys are mentally very strong. They are broken. Uh, and they have all the energy to walk 1,000 kilometers. So they are going to walk on the roads. It's, it's going to be unsafe for them. Some car will come or something. You know, problem ho jayega, or they don't have money to eat, stay with the little kids. So very dangerous. What we can do is we can start interstate buses. Ki, okay, okay. If the Maharashtra ki bus uh, UP mein nahi ghus sakti hai, to Maharashtra mein internal to chal sakti hai. And this is only for the migrants. The boss bus thana chong se khadi ho, aur wo sirf nasi tak jari hai, yahan pe roh kahi, uh, you know, uh, going to some UP border or something. Maha jaake chhod do. So at least the internal journey of the states in UP, in Punjab, in Rajasthan, MP, Tamil Nadu. So the people who are walking interstate that movement on the roads, 
कैन स्टॉप एंड दीज पीपल विल बी एबल टू सिट इन दोज बसेस की बस जाती है वहां पे पांच माइग्रेंट दिखते हैं कि चलो बस बस के अंदर बैठो यू कैंट वॉक यू नो सो उनको वहां पे बॉर्डर पे छोड़ दिया फिर देन लेट देम स्ट्रगल टू गेट इन एंड ऑल बट लीड एट लीस्ट द रिस्क फैक्टर रिड्यूसेस इट्स लाइक कि हां ये बड़ा यू नो दिस इज अ गुड पॉइंट एंड ऑल हम लोग सोचते हैं और उसके तीन चार दिन बाद इंटरस्टेट बसेस शुरू हुई थी अगर ये इंटरस्टेट बसेस पहले दिन से शुरू हुई होती सब स्टेट्स के अंदर सो so, इतनी प्रॉब्लम्स नहीं आई होती माइग्रेंट जो सड़कों पर चल के जिन्होंने जान गई आई थ्री हंड्रेड नाइनटी सेवन लोगों की मेरे पास लिस्ट विद एवरी डिटेल है जिन लोगों ने जान गई तो ये नहीं गई होती एंड विनोद भाई वुड अग्री विद मी बिकॉज मिस डन सो मच ऑफ रिसर्च ऑन दीज पीपल एंड ऑल वो जो सड़कों पर तकलीफें हुई और जो प्लाइट हुआ दैट वुड हैव बिन अवॉइडेड बट माई आई एम नॉट इन पोजिशन टू एडवाइज द गवर्नमेंट बट आई वुड से यू नो प्रोटोकॉल्स तोड़ो और जाने बचाओ समटाइम मैन एवर दिस है So no, we've taken a lot of your time, and we have a we have an awesome panel after this. So thank you so much for making the time for us, and and thank you for doing all the work that you do. Uh, you know, it's been a wonder. I'm 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 still getting a lot of chat, a, a, a lot of messages for you, and a lot of recommendations, which I'm going to take the liberty to forward to you personally. Please, thank you so much, Anand, and thank you so much. Uh, you know, everyone for making a part of your family, and God bless and just keep shining always. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sonu. Thank you. um udit can i ask you to yeah i i think pooja has to... yeah yeah uh hi uh so thanks thanks a lot uh, sonu and thank you very much uh, anand for that very interesting conversation uh, uh now udit will come on to share the introductory note with us uh, and we'll carry on from there thanks thank you pooja um Uh, so welcome again for the fourth uh, webinar in our series uh, ie think migration series which we are doing with omedia india network and um, you know one of the uh, central things that we uh, what what triggered this uh, whole series of uh, webinars on india's internal migration last year was the massive reverse migration that we saw uh, in april and may and june and it sort of uh, really shook up the whole nation everybody we we actually were dreading to move out of home partly that we might be we we might meet up with migrants painfully walking back home and the and the pain was just too much so one of the reasons why we thought of doing this whole series was to focus on this because we realized that this is uh, an area which is uh, which is largely ignored we are, migrants in india although they run into hundreds of millions are invisible and in the last 3 4 episodes that we've we've had these discussions we've realized that not only are the number of migrants in india uh, more than the population of many many countries in the world but these are people with very limited protection uh, no social protection or negligible social protection and there are all kinds of problems in accessing those social protections and the further they go away from home those uh, problems just grow many fold and these are people also who have very little personal savings because most of the migration in india is largely of the nature where they, it is driven by distress i am a migrant but i'm not talking about migrants like us uh, we do not generally migrate because of distress we migrate out of choice and all of human history is is the story of human migration but not all of it is driven by choice a lot of it is driven by distress and and a lot of migration that we've seen is driven by migration and this reverse migration that we saw last year was also driven by distress because frankly they were they were caught in a bind there was no way they could have sustained the city life that they were living or the life that they had in places where they had migrated because their incomes had totally collapsed um and walking ba back was the, the, that was the only option because there was no way to um uh, you know get back a bus or a train and as uh, uh, as uh, vinod kapri's uh, fantastic uh, documentary 1 2 3 2km shows the first sentence in that documentary says ya to ghar jayenge ya mar jayenge whether 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 migrant is saying either i will die on the road or i will reach home so that was the kind of distress that was there now the issue as we've seen is that we we have some cases 
we have some exemplary people like mr sonu sood who have helped out tremendously but on the whole what is the what is the problem on the whole um where is the structural solution to this and so we wanted to take a break from our series where we typically looked at migrant and their issues like migrant and their health care or their livelihoods and we'll, we'll come back to some of those issues but this episode was dedicated to understanding why are we blind about migrants and last year we were not so blind it was because it was sort of thrown in front of us there was no other visual but the migrant crisis this year partly understandably because the second wave affected all of us um uh, people like you and me have largely forgotten that the same crisis that hit us so badly has hit them even worse you know this is second successive year of uh, incomes coming down and absolutely no health or uh, social security uh, uh, support so the idea here today in the time that we have is to understand two things one why are we blind to the migrants that that are there and these are hundreds and hundreds of millions so these are this is not a small number that we're talking about and they still work in our homes and they are still uh, uh working in small uh, industries uh, and every way every bit involved in, uh, in in the in the regular functioning of the nation and two what are the innovative interesting ways in which we can mainstream their concerns you know the governments and politicians they will follow only what people want and 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 the middle class with its influential voice can set the agenda so can the middle class set the agenda in a certain different manner so we have a fantastic panel here um uh, let me just wait quickly introduce uh, we have obviously mr vinod kapri who's a filmmaker and and a, and a former journalist who's who's made the uh, fantastic uh, documentary 1232 kilometers and it's there on hotstar and i really seriously uh, hope that all of you watch it it's not an easy watch but you must watch it then we have mr atul satija who is the founder uh, of give india it's one of the biggest platforms for donations and and, and helping people we have ms uh, archana guradia gupta she uh, i'm a chair of the fiki plo and she's also crucially and this is very important that she was the national chair for the msme committee and she understands the issues on what is happening uh, msme in the msme sector where a lot of the migrants actually work and then we have uh, ms uh, dr rangna kumari who's with the csr uh, center for social research and she's one of the most vocal voices uh in the system and she has always been uh, on many of these issues and she understands both as an academic and as a as a as a senior voice in the civil society to understand what's happening so i would first like to go to vinod uh because his story uh, uh is 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 movie has set the agenda on on many of the conversations on the two questions but i would ask you to first 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 question on why are we so blind vinod what have you found <clears throat> see i'll i'll narrate you one incident that how this uh, whole journey started and you know when this lockdown was announced on 24th of march 27th of march i was on the road and i was meeting all those these migrant laborers and i'll tell i'll narrate you one incident mai noida mein tha and there was one lady i was interviewing people the different uh, laborers who are uh, without food from last 2 3 days and i was interviewing दोस्त पीपल और उसी वक्त क्या हुआ देर वॉज वन थर्टी टू ईयर ओल्ड लेडी उनका नाम था कमला एंड शी वॉज फ्रॉम रीवा मध्य प्रदेश सडनली वो लेडी आई और उन्होंने शी वॉज वेयरिंग ए साड़ी एंड उन्होंने अपनी पूरी साड़ी ऊपर तक उठा दी टिल नीज के भी ऊपर तक एंड आई वॉज शॉक आई सेट आप ये क्या कर रही है सो शी सेट आप को ये अपना कैमरा इधर लाइए और मेरी टांगों को दिखाइए सो आई वॉज सरप्राइज आई सेट वॉट हैपन शी सेट नहीं आप इसको दिखाइए मैंने कहा नहीं आप प्लीज साड़ी अपनी नीचे खींचिए बोले नहीं आप पहले इसको दिखाइए अपना इसका वीडियो बनाइए आप तो देन वेन शी इंसिस्टेड एंड आई सॉ उनके पैर पर दो लाठी के निशान थे पूरा उसका उनको जो उनकी जो थाइस थी उसमें नील पड़ गया था और दो लाठी के निशान थे तो मैंने कहा ये कैसे हुआ तो उन्होंने कहा कि हमारे पास वैसे ही राशन नहीं है कोई हमको मदद मिल नहीं रही है जब हम बाहर जा रहे हैं तो पुलिस हमको मारती है और ऐसे ये हमारे नील के निशान पड़ गए हैं 
और अब हमारे पास जाने का कोई रास्ता नहीं तो दो कमला का जो इंसिडेंट था दैट दैट वाज रियली सो हॉरिफाइंग फॉर मी एंड फॉर टू थ्री डेज आई वाज जस्ट थिंकिंग दैट व्हाट इज हैपनिंग टू दोस दोस पीपल हु आर हु आर टेकिंग दिस जर्नी ऑफ 800 किलोमीटर 1200 किलोमीटर 2000 किलोमीटर देन आई थॉट दैट आई शुड डॉक्यूमेंट दिस जर्नी एंड नाउ आई आई विल नरेट द सेकंड इंसिडेंट जो व्हिच हैपेंड ड्यूरिंग दिस जर्नी यू नो ढाबे में हर जगह पर इन लोगों को कोई भी खाना नहीं दे रहा था क्योंकि पुलिस ने मना किया था कि किसी को भी आपको खाना नहीं देना है एंड 16-17 घंटे से साइकिल चलाने के बाद जब ये लोग ढाबे में पहुंचते थे तो लोग मना कर देते थे इन लोगों की चिंता क्या थी कि हमारी साइकिल कैसे सेफ रहेगी हम कोई ऐसी सेफ जगह मिले जहां हम लोग अपनी साइकिल को सेफ रखें तो तब दो तीन ढाबे वालों ने मना किया तो फाइनली एक चौथा ढाबा आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस जर्नी इट वॉज अ प्लेस कॉल्ड बिसौली इन बदायू डिस्ट्रिक्ट उत्तर प्रदेश और वो जो चौथा ढाबे वाला था उसने कहा कि आपको हम खाना भी देंगे और सोने को भी देंगे लेकिन इन सब ने खाने के लिए मना कर दिया बिकॉज दे थॉट कि अगर हमने खाना मांगा तो हो सकता है ये हमको सोने को ना दे यहां पर एंड उसके बाद ये लोग सोने के लिए चले गए उसने एक छोटी सी जगह इनको दे दी और आपको जानकर हैरानी होगी उदित रात में डेढ़ बजे इन लोगों को भूख लगी तो इनमें से जो एक मजदूर था आशीष वो वहां पे जो उन लोगों का एक डस्टबिन बना था जिसमें बासी खाना फेंका हुआ था वहां से वो रोटियां बीन रहा था और जब उस ढाबे के मालिक को पता चला बंटू पाठक उसका नाम था जब उसको पता चला कि वो ऐसा कर रहे हैं तो उन्होंने पूछा कि मैंने तुमको खाना ऑफर किया था तुमने खाना मांगा था नहीं हमसे बोला नहीं सर हमको लगा कि अगर हम खाना मांगेंगे तो आपको लगेगा कि ये तो बहुत कुछ मांग रहे हैं तो हमने आपसे इसलिए खाना नहीं मांगा then he offered help then he offered food also but i am telling you the flight and i am narrating you narrating you these two incidents ki aap samajhiye ki ye jo kya kehte hain usko bhayavata hai is puri ghatna ki jo pichle saal jo migration hua ye sirf usko underline karne ke liye maine do incident aapko bataye udit this is this is uh, uh, true that uh, as, as if you look back in the reporting that we've done especially at express we we've uh, repeatedly shown how uh, the system was fairly insensitive uh, and by system i essentially mean governments across the board uh, were fairly insensitive to the needs of the of, of all the migrants right from deciding when you go back and how you go back or preparing any grounds for them it was fairly insensitive my question still remains and i'll come to uh, dr ranjana kumari on this on why is it that we have been that blind to the needs of the migrants because you know we often i mean i'll just give you a very uh, simple example often enough we see on television uh, bites of people saying that uh, you know uh, uh, urban people uh, uh, urban city goers saying it's a fantastic system the vaccination you go on to the online thing you you know get your uh, appointment and everything happens so easily without uh, realizing for a moment how inequitous that thing is and that the rickshaw wala or the auto wala who has dropped them perhaps to the vaccination center perhaps cannot access it just as easily as they have so what is the reason for this for this invisibility why why are we failing to recognize them ranjana ji you are on mute ma'am first of all i did thank you for inviting me and uh, you very uh, nicely articulated that this was total insensitivity of the state mechanism in this country total overlook you know they just did not want to confront that problem you heard sonu saying that if buses were going then there would not have been this kind of a problem if police was instructed to behave then so many people got beaten up during that period women you know had to you know there were pregnant women who delivered children on the road side and so many of those stories are horror stories but you know the problem with us is that you know this unprecedented crisis went by and now still it has not come back to you know those, those people are not coming back they they can't come back so still and people have forgotten all about it you know it just came as a hype it came as a you know and such human tragedy is so soon forgotten that's the whole problem in this uh, in this whole system now the other thing that you are asking after who are these people who come 
And who are these people? They are the poorest from the village. The women who have absolutely no wherewithal to look after their family, there are men, the women, they migrate to these cities. And they are uh, not just seasonal migrants, but also are settlers. This time, the tragedy is that people who are also, you know, in some sense were settled in the urban areas and trying to get and had some kind of a link jobs. So some jo you know, job guarantee they had, but they also have gone back. Because of the, they were just thrown out of the jobs. I mean, a lot of uh, these companies closed down. A lot of these, you know, work just stopped. And they just went back. And they were, nobody bothered to ask how employers have so easily gotten rid of them. You know, why employers have not taken responsibility. Government did not make any policy about that. Because, you know, these are the poorest of the poor from the village. And when they uh, migrate to urban areas, they are the self-employed in most of the cases. They go and find their jobs. They are the you know, street vendors. They are the uh, domestic workers. They are the people who, who, who provide a great service to the city people. But you know, the, the moment they are out of your sight, you don't want to even think about them. You don't want to even remember them. And that is why such poorest of the poor who migrate, nobody wants to leave the village. But they are being pushed out of these villages because there is nothing to survive in the village. And uh, they come to urban areas in search of job. And when they are here, they are pushed from one locality to the other in their jukis. You know, sometimes jukis are burned. Sometimes they are pushed from one area. So, again, in urban areas, there is no pol uh, policy for them. Even when, as you rightly said, they deliver a very important service whether it is construction labor, street, uh, you know, labor, the ones who are doing the road or who the any, any kind of labor is working. But I want to draw your attention to more important factor that because, you know, because of this uh, feminization of the uh, and also sexual division of labor, it, it is very, very important to talk about the women labor who have, who have gone back. What is happening to them there? I'll stop here, but I want to just tell you why they have not been cared for because we love their services, but we don't want to see them around as middle class people, upper middle class people. And also government does not have a very definite policy. You talked about social protection. When, you know, I was writing uh, a whole uh, redefining the uh, international labor report when I was working in ILO in Geneva, we, we knew that, you know, so many labor laws, so many uh, uh, social protections are not going to be implemented in the informal sector of the economy. 73% of women are in the informal sector. And none of these things happen none of things are there so that's something which we we'll need to look into and when we come to our solution side of the whole discussion i would like to flag some of those issues thanks thanks ranjanaji it's it's very important the element that you talked about the uh, the plight of women and and um, children also i suppose because we've seen in uh, the latest data government data itself shows that between 2014 and 19 child malnutrition has actually worsened in India. It's, it's a quite a remarkable yes. data. This was data for states, uh, only half the states, uh, half the states, the data will come out in a, in a month's time perhaps. Uh, and uh, that would be data after the COVID hit. And we are likely to see even worse uh, date, uh, malnutrition figures uh, for children in that, in that phase. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll go to Archana ji. Uh, you know, Archana ji, one of the things that, you know, as an economist, uh, we are all uh, we are all taught that you know uh, this is cheap labor you know um, this is the ease of doing business in India this is what which this is this is what constitutes our core competence this is what gives us the edge in the global market we can defeat China or compete with Vietnam or Bangladesh but it comes with as as uh, you know G's experience has shown and as all of us who've read newspapers have seen great indignities. So you somebody who's, uh, you know, I was quite struck by your essay on on women uh, uh, on women uh, uh, empowerment and women in workforce in one of the recent books. You're somebody who understands both the industry side of it, the the pulls and pressures of doing business in an efficient manner, but you also understand these people. You also come with the sensitivity of what it needs to uh, what needs to be done to ensure that all sections of the society stay together. You know, where do you think the problem lies and why are we so, so you know, lacking in concern for this huge chunk of uh, people? 
Well, um, you see, if you see the number of migrants in India, I think it's about 400 million, which is probably the, uh, the highest percentage anywhere in the world, right? Other countries have developed and they've had migrant labor, but say China, about 10% of the people are migrant laborers, unlike ours, which is about 30, 35%, and probably a higher percentage of the working population. So that has happened because of the lopsided growth that is happening in India, where the jobs and the industries are concentrated in a few places and people have to travel. And the second thing is these jobs which are there are not permanent and they don't pay enough for you to become a settler. So some people do become settlers, but you need a permanent job and you need enough income to support your family in an expensive city. So that is why we have this migrant crisis to this level. Now, suppose the jobs were closer to home. Suppose you could get jobs near your house, then you wouldn't have migrant crisis to that extent. Or if you migrated to another city where the jobs came up for its own reasons, for its own economic, uh, strategic, whatever reasons, then there has to be a responsibility to make that migrant a settler. Besides the economic part of it, it's not a good way for human beings to live away from their families the whole year. You know, we tend we like to live as families, not as individuals. You know, far away from your social uh, construct. So, this we have to think of building structures which you know where people can live with their families. Whether you're living in your place of uh, you know where you were born or whether you're living in another place. You should be able to live with your family. And the two, three things that I can think of, one is, of course, uh, part of this crisis is about migrant labor. A bigger part of this cri crisis is about job loss and lack of jobs. So why we have so many people in the villages is because there are no jobs. So, the, you know, you just live off the land, you know, share whatever there is. So the focus has to be on job growth and government has to focus on promoting MSMEs and labor intensive industries. That is one. And try to broad base, it. try to go out, you know, the way we originally we had the thought of creating industrial centers. So deliberately go towards the villages so that people are not living away, they can afford to live close to their families. The second idea, which I have written a lot about in this book, we have written about women's issues, you know, her right to equality is that to me, something like e-commerce can be a pathway, especially for women, because women have suffered the worst in this go. You know, they were the first to get fired and they're the last to get uh, hired. And this is not just in India, but in all countries, women's job losses have been much greater than men's job losses. Um, to create livelihood for women, and craftspeople. In India, we have a bank of craftspeople which is dying out. These are skills which are inherited for which there is a demand. Uh, I just like to share a small figure here. The world uh, demand for handicrafts is around 400 billion. And I think India just exports 1 billion. While well, we may have maybe 30% of the world's craftspeople. So to create those networks for women to get them onto e-commerce platforms, if we can do, which will push livelihood and income to the villages. And um, maybe I can address this later, but you have examples across the world which have successfully done this. So, for example, you have a, a platform called Taobao in China, which has been working on rural e-commerce. It's owned by Alibaba. And they, the gov uh, working with the government, they've designated one lakh villages as Taobao villages. So they create training centers and try to get at least 100 people to sell their products online. And villages where this has been successful, and some of them have been very successful, there is reverse migration. Actually, rural migration has been reversed. So this is something to look at, not just about how to give dignity to migrants, housing, healthcare, social security networks for people who are away, but also to try and actually create a situation where people can live with their families, whether as settlers or in the villages. 
Right. So, I mean, this is this is important. I mean, one aspect of this whole debate is what the state could have done, and uh, and I think I think unanimously uh, on that aspect, the view would be that the state left a lot to be desired. But I think one of the central motives of uh, having this discussion today was to look at what is what is the reason for blindness beyond the state in in our drawing rooms why doesn't this dominate in conversations and i would like to come to atul uh, satija who's sort of is uh, in a unique situation because he looks after uh, you know he seeks donations for these many many of these causes and is in very uniquely placed uh, in trying to understand uh, how people behave so you know atul what is what is uh, can you share with us your understanding of the ecosystem that you see in india and um, how people behave what 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 is this uh, understanding that you have from your own experience yeah that uh, firstly thanks for having me here uh, so that uh, this obviously was the biggest disaster the world has seen right in a long 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 time but we have seen uh, you know uh, in smaller routine earthquakes uh cyclones floods every year all disasters civil society response is very similar uh there is a rescue there is relief there is some recovery and support and there is a rehab phase after that you know as long as the dialogue is very very strong in the media in the mainstream in the boardrooms uh in the drawing rooms the civil society support is always uh very very strong so during the disaster time it is very uh, uh easy for people to come forward and give support because you know by nature we are all connected human beings there is higher empathy but when the dialogue stops when the conversation stop we all get back to our routine busy lives and then stop doing the things that we in the disaster times are very naturally doing to give you concrete numbers in icr at the india covid response fund we launched last year and this year we have 10 lakh donors who came forward and donated 10 lakh donors just on our platform our partner platforms had another 25 lakh people who donated so 35 lakh indians coming forward and donating money and this is formal donation on one platform look at all the other crowdfunding platforms and this is only the tip of the giving in india we give when we trust people right so when my maid my driver my helper somebody i know in my community is in pain we get for, we go forward and support so the support during the disaster time and in very informal first connection is actually not a problem in civil society that's what we have seen there is so much outpouring of generosity and support in that first degree of connection at the time when the need is uh, the highest what happens is that understanding of the need for investing in rehab the permanent problems that are there like archana said livelihoods job creation smaller cities where people have to go and find economic activity the gender crisis the education crisis there are so many layers of these disasters that take 5 years 10 years 15 years to fix you know covid has taken the country back 5 years 7 years for large number of people and that is not neither the job nor how civil society can participate in whenever you take a second degree right like if i large number of people who were discussing as migrant workers are not that we touch on daily basis sme workers textile workers you know the people we touch is actually a minority of the migrant workers right a large number of people we don't interface and touch how can civil society go and support all the people that they are not even in touch with the through tech platforms right so the role of uh, civil society is to have a dialogue take the stakeholders accountable the role of government is to actually create policies and infrastructure but there is also a role for private sector to come forward and think of the, them as not just consumers migrant workers earn money in cities but they also spend money in cities they are also consumers and customers in cities if you can create it industry incentive and give me free land and tax benefits to serve us customers why can't government for example state and center give incentives for startup entrepreneurs to come and say 
do businesses that are job creating in cities treat them as customers give them payday loans without documentation the way we did in mfi there is so much that private sector can go and come and create services call it fortune at the bottom of the urban economic ladder right fortune in the migrant workers as businesses so i think a lot of uh, sort of this trifecta of samaj sarkar bazaar like the civil society governments and markets have to come together to solve the problem it is not uh, uh, necessarily a civil society not looking at the problem uh, uh, space in my mind right now uh, that's a that's a very relevant point about um, how people react differently in a disaster but as the sense of disaster goes away although it may not have and that is the point with with this crisis that it has continued and actually worsened it's just that the images are not there anymore perhaps uh, and this is a very crucial bit um and also shows the importance of seeing those things the visuals last year we were seeing those visuals so even when perhaps that migrant was not as poorly placed last last year itself this year with with even greater distress in terms of reduced incomes and zero savings now or savings going to negative uh there is the the outpouring is not so much and i just wanted to circle back to uh, vinod ji on this that you know last year when you made this uh, uh, documentary and you were going through the cycle of interactions with people and this year if perhaps you are uh, checking back with those people or with similar people and with the people in the cities like us what is the difference now you feel you know is the is it is it the same thing that last year there was a massive outpouring or there was genuine concern and uh, interest in this issue and that has dropped off now yeah so you know uh, main aapke uh, is sawal ke jawab mein aane se pehle i think uh, i should respond to uh, ranjana ji and uh, she has uh, really pointed a very valid point uh, she has raised a very valid point and which is that why we are failing to recognize them and why they are still invisible uh udit ji mujhe ek baat sabhi se puchni hai aap se aur jitne bhi log panel mein hain and uh, ye bahut zaruri sawal hai ye hum sab ke liye sawal hai kyunki hum log ये बात तो कहने में कोई हिचक नहीं होगी कि सभी लोग कह देंगे बहुत आसानी से कि सरकारों ने कुछ नहीं किया सिस्टम ने कुछ नहीं किया लेकिन जो ये सवाल रंजना जी ने उठाया और जिसका जिसको जिसके बारे में अर्चना जी ने भी जिक्र किया तो क्या जो हमारे घरों में अब ये सवाल हम सबसे है और ये पूरी सोसाइटी से है सवाल क्या जो हमारे घरों में हमारे घर में व्हाइट वॉश करने आते हैं क्या जो हमारे घरों में प्लम्बिंग का काम करने आते हैं क्या जो हमारे घरों में खिड़कियां ठीक करने आते हैं कारपेंटर आते हैं हम सबको अपने से सवाल पूछना चाहिए कि क्या कभी हमने उनसे पूछा कि तुम कहाँ के रहने वाले हो तुम कौन हो तुम्हारे घर में परिवार में कौन सदस्य है कितने बच्चे हैं तुम्हारी शादी हुई या नहीं हुई बहुत ही मतलब आई वुड से रेयर एस ऑफ रेयर दैट वी इंटरेक्ट विद दीज पीपल और अब मैं आता हूं उसके दूसरे पहलू पर आप अपनी फोन डायरी उठाइए अपना मोबाइल उठाइए और उसमें देखिए कि आपने बहुत सारे लोग जो आपको सर्विस प्रोवाइड कर रहे हैं उनके नाम किस तरह से सेव किए हुए हैं मैं मैं अपने बारे में भी कह सकता हूं इस इस लॉकडाउन से पहले तक पिछले साल और इस जर्नी से पहले तक मेरे मोबाइल पे जो मेरे न्यूज का जो मेरे घर में न्यूज डिलीवर करता उसका नाम न्यूज वाला के तौर पर सेव था जहां से मैं फिश लेता हूं उसमें लिखा था फिश वाला सेक्टर 37 सेवन सो दीज पीपल आर वालास फॉर अस उनका नाम था ही नहीं तो ये हम शुरुआत ठीक है हम ब्लेम कर सकते हैं सिस्टम को सरकारों को लेकिन हमको थोड़ा सा खुद में भी झांकना पड़ेगा कि हमने खुद इनको देखा ही नहीं हमने इनको इंसान माना ही नहीं सो दिस इज दिंग विच आई वुड लाइक टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू रंजना जी की वाई दे आर इनविजिबल वाई यू नो वी आर फेलिंग टू रिकनाइज दम अब आया आपका दूसरा सवाल जो जो आपने अभी पूछा आ, मैं ना सिर्फ ये जो सात लोग जिनके साथ जो जिनकी मैंने यात्रा की मैं उनकी बात करूंगा बल्कि मैं कम से कम सैकड़ों माइग्रेंट लेबर्स के टच में आज भी हूं और क्योंकि उनके साथ एक एक जुड़ाव हुआ और उनके साथ उन लोगों ने सबके साथ नंबर दिए तो एक जुड़ाव हुआ मैं ये कहूंगा कि इस बार ना उदित जी आ, जो महामारी और ये आ, सेकेंड वेव में जो मौतें होने लगी और ऑक्सीजन और हॉस्पिटल की जो कमी होने लगी उसमें ये 
उसमें ये जो माइग्रेंट लेबर्स के साथ जो कुछ हो रहा था वो बहुत बुरी तरह से इग्नोर हो गया और इस बार भी लोग गए बस एक अच्छी बात सिर्फ इतनी थी कि इस बार ट्रेन चल रही थी आपकी बसेस चल रही थी उनके पास जाने के जरिया था जिसकी जिसकी वजह से वो लोग अपने घरों पर पहुंच गए लेकिन मैं ये बहुत यकीन के साथ कह सकता हूँ कि 70 से 80 फीसदी लोग जैसे मेरी कहानी के जो सात किरदार थे वो सातों के सातों लोग चले गए अप्रैल थर्ड वीक तक वो सभी के सभी अपने गांव समस्तीपुर और सहरसा और मधुबनी और सुपौल मधेपुरा वो लोग पहुंच चुके थे क्यों वो इसीलिए क्योंकि उनको ये उनके दिमाग में एकदम बहुत बहुत ही उनके दिमाग में एक क्लैरिटी थी कि अगर ये लॉकडाउन जो लग गया है अभी इसके बाद जो सबसे पहले किसी को इग्नोर किया जाएगा इस समाज में वो हम ही लोगों को किया जाएगा हम ही लोगों को खाना नहीं मिलेगा हम ही लोगों को राशन नहीं मिलेगा हम ही लोगों को मकान मालिक कहेगा कि आप घर छोड़ के चले जाओ और हो सकता है कि कुछ हफ्तों के बाद ट्रेन भी बंद हो जाए और बस भी बंद हो जाए फिर हम लोग क्या करेंगे फिर से हमको वही साइकिल से जाना पड़ेगा वही पैदल जाना पड़ेगा तो तो बड़ी दुर्भाग्य की बात यह है एंड इट्स रियली रियली वेरी अनफॉर्चुनेट इट आफ्टर इवन आफ्टर वन आफ्टर वन ईयर We we can't, can't you know, they can't trust us. They can't trust the system. They can't trust us. Right, that's true. I I just wanted to come back to Ranjana ji on this that, you know, uh, that we can ask that question on why is it that we are in this position or why do we react this way, and I that that is why I wanted to focus on this and not just blame on the government because governments frankly follow people at one level and. they'll need to know that we care about this issue for them to care about it so i wanted to ask you to start this cycle by telling us you know what can india do and you can include the bit on 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 the concerns for women and children what can india do and by india i mean the non government part us people sitting here watching this webinar reading our newspapers in drawing room conversations ignoring uh, these realities uh, when they stop being so called disasters what can we do to improve what can we do to make sure you know a lot of, a lot of solutions as uh, people who have been part of the academics and economists sociologists we know a lot of solutions where we have to locate the kind of uh, you know jobs available in the areas that they come from nobody wants to leave home i mean i am of the firm believer because i come from a village and i know that nobody wants to leave their village and home and come to urban areas in, and to struggle and survive so it's important first of all to really start creating the kind of work that we can create for them local industry can do a lot by creating a lot of subsidiaries lot of you know different kinds of activities a chain can be created by which you can link the village with whatever major um, you know work industry is doing whatever uh, industry that is going to the villages so try to link that and also smes i think everybody has been talking about that let us think about developing those so that livelihood and employment can be guaranteed the other thing that i want to come back again to government because these are national citizens we keep calling they them you know they they are they are india's citizens they are our, they are us they are the whole country you know should recognize that without them we don't exist actually so in that sense i would say that government you know so many schemes have been launched like jandhan uh, you know uh, accounts were open out of just i read uh, recently a research where 76% account holders are women where we 76% women account holders only something like uh, you know very very small number is something 23% are the women who are really getting any kind of transfer of uh, you know this uh, to their account now these are not even below poverty line below poverty line has not been looked at at all through these schemes same is about manrega i mean after all when they are in the village how are they surviving 100 days employment is that enough and that is true with such you know uh, the minimum wages have not gone up at all even in the urban areas neither in the rural areas so let us see what we can do and the government has to come up with a proper understanding of what is the minimum wages where are we drawing the line for the rural and how are we keeping a equity between the minimum wages of men and women 
they must get the same same so a fix the minimum wages look at that forget about all that we were working with asha and anganwadi workers i mean their wages have just frozen 1000 rupees i mean you are sending them to every covid infected family to deliver medicine and you are giving them this 1000 rupees for doing that service i mean this is something let's look at each sector and let's look at what kind of service that those people are delivering and then make a proper economic assessment of the value of labor and then accordingly the wages should be fixed not just just enough to survive i mean we have kept people enough to survive for almost now going to be eighth decade and this is not going to work so a work on that number 2 i would say that in in every which way we need to connect the industry with the local so start developing rural infrastructure if we will develop means i mean nothing new i'm saying actually you know instead of central vista we can do lot of infrastructure in the rural area and that will create an employment situation especially these days we need to give every hand work so every mouth can be fed you know this this should be the principle in this this period but you know i think priorities are lost at the moment i feel that very strongly and i know i'm saying a very making a very strong statement but we need to recognize that this is what is happening at the moment now thirdly so rural infrastructure linking it micro enterprise you know small uh, initiatives in the villages for employment generation and then of course looking at the wages decent work where is decent work you know india signatory to ilo's convention on decent work but how many people are really getting the decent work that would mean that social protection that will that would mean that you know employment guarantee that would mean so many things but you know we just sign these conventions and we don't really follow them so i think that is what we need decent work for rural people our people let's try to see that they stay back how generations of economists have gone by you know, you know talking about the same thing so i don't want to kind of you know sound very repetitive and very but i think there is a responsibility on the side of the government on the industry and civil society is you know doing what it can do best collect some donations we can become santa claus but how long how much can we do you know so it's not that we need structural policy intervention government and economists of niti ayog has to sit down and work out a whole plan for our uh, uh, you know migrant labor so i think this is not going to be piecemeal do something small here and there fine these are very good people doing very good work in civil society and with you know motivated driven we distributed ration and i was wondering how many, how many days can this family eat this ration you know and i felt very bad about doing this but then that time we could not now another thing i want to draw your attention to that covid is not going to go so soon there is a big disparity going between vaccination of women and men you know 17% less women are getting vaccinated ude this is not going to be done we have got to get the government to, and these are mostly poor people mostly people coming from villages first of all mis- misinformation was not corrected so all kinds of thing that you know you will not be able to produce children this that and the other and then now they are not coming forward for vaccination so this may not be in the context of what we are saying but this is very relevant if they will not be healthy there is no health insurance there is no uh, proper health facility and now you are not even able to vaccinate them so how will this all whole thing fan out so rethinking you know rethink please rethink in terms of economy employment you know uh, wages in terms of everything let's start something which push the government to do it push the industry to do it this is, should be our job i mean we can be santa claus we can do lot of very good work we are doing in our own right and in our own ways but let's you know be more advocates for these people they need advocates they need voices right thanks thanks a lot for that uh, i'll uh, come to archana ji last i will first ask atul this whole issue about how long can we be uh, the civil society be santa claus atul uh, this is a i mean how do you how do you dis- you know you are working in that field uh, and is there a certain exasperation that you know people only respond to disasters that's a very salient point they only respond to disasters and then the interest keeps falling how do you decide how do you work your strategy so i'm not again i'm not asking you what the government should do i'm asking what is the solution in your mind on how to trigger a a behavioral change in people 
on wanting to care more uh, either out of charity or because they see some business sense out of it i don't know uh, what is your sense there see people have been santa claus forever right ever since life came on the planet people have been playing santa claus it's not like people don't give people give people help uh, uh the reality is that people organize themselves as a society people organize themselves as private markets and people organize themselves as government as well you know it's all people everywhere so expecting a person to play a santa claus role and that to solve the problem is also an unfair expectation of people you are paying tax right uh, it's not that you should stop saying you know i'm paying tax but that is not being a santa claus you're all living in society with different roles uh people give uh people also give when disasters are not there uh there are obviously ways you can encourage people to give uh you can bring role models and we discuss sono so there's a a role model for a lot of people to come forward uh, people ask question like why there are no more sono suits for example or more vinods right so role models will actually inspire other people to come forward it is happening we did a very large i for india event last year where a large part of bollywood came together to inspire people to give and they also contributed we're doing something similar this year Arjit has done a lot of work this year Priyanka Chopra has done a lot of work so there are people from that fraternity of come forward there are people who have come from civil society who have raised money college alumni groups people in villages come forward ngos have come forward foundations have come forward so a lot of work is happening we shouldn't discount what's happening already and i think this will continue right like inspiring more and more people to give will continue but i think the most important part is that there is a inclusion of migrants on the mainstream that has to happen and that inclusion cannot happen unless it is formal inclusion you can't say you have a voting right but you are living in bangalore and your community is in jharkhand so you can't vote i mean in today's world when everybody has data access and devices why can't you have a uh, voting happening that is digital why can't you have inclusion in voting if i can't vote in destination or at source how will i see you go to slums in cities and just look at infrastructure in a migratory slum and in a slum from the same state in bangalore you look at kannada slums and bengali slums access to electricity sanitation nearby education in uh, mother tongue all of that is different right if they don't have a local vote who will care for them system can't care right system is responding to the votes similarly at home they are not participating in local democratic institutions there gram sabhas happen in october usually in most states people start migrating in august september if they are not sitting when you are deciding where will manrega money go uh, then you will not get the benefit even if the family is migrating and the woman is back home she won't get the job so you are always at the bottom of the stack even in community institutions that are being formed with the state livelihood missions in uh, rural areas migrants are not able to participate because they are not a part of that community because they are migrating so you don't get access to finance and a lot of other problems that come with that so i think we have to the inclusion agenda is very very important in a formal sense uh, I, i don't mean formal job i just mean formal inclusion of people no matter where they are last year in covid we saw that odisha government up government bihar government supported migrants in destination cities right many state governments do skilling programs in destination so if indian embassy can support indians in thailand in bangkok right the population of uh, up people in karnataka is more than indians in thailand you can easily have an embassy for up in uh, uh, karnataka and support people so there is there is enough within the country you need to do to make sure that we understand the problem we support where people are and all of this will happen once you have the data you have a dialogue and you use digitization for inclusion and unless the foundation of data dialogue and digitization is done well we can keep discussing how can civil society donate more uh, and that's not the solution some very interesting points atul there thanks a lot for them because uh, see one of the things that uh, gets repeated again and again uh, when we talking to uh experts uh on migration uh and this is the fourth episode we are doing this is that 
it's a it's of crucial importance that my that migrants reclaim a political voice in the country because they move away from their uh, uh, source state and go to a destination state they, they are actually nowhere in the political process and that becomes a massive problem so this is a structural thing that we need to rectify we need to sort of uh, work towards um, would i go to archana ji uh, because she is in the most uh, interesting uh, uh, place as a, as a, as an industry voice an industry is you know sort of uh, pictured as as the villain of the piece in most of the cases and uh, it is said that they are profiting from all the misery uh, i'll come to you but i just have a couple of announcements to make before it's too late we have uh, we'll we'll just have a quick uh, question and answer session so please share your uh, questions in the for the panel in the chat box uh, and we'll be answering them please uh, make them brief questions so that we can take as many as we can and also to all the or anybody who's watching this right now or, or later um, indian express has a, a micro website on uh, migration in india um and uh, uh, you know we are hoping to populate it with the best views and understanding and analysis uh, on migration so uh, here is an invitation if you are interested as a researcher as somebody who reports on these issues uh, uh, analyzes the data on this or has some new data new analysis please write to us on migration in india expressindia.com and we'll try to have your uh, analysis or research in the in the website so now coming to archana ji for the last comment before we get on with the q and a session so archana ji what is the role that industry can have it's 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 you know at one level it is vilified for having for for benefiting from this misery of of the migrants that is one aspect uh, but actually the solution any long term solution for migrants as we are repeatedly seeing is that the industry should come to the villages or 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 employment opportunity should come closer to the people i mean that is the more sustainable solution so how do you sort of look at this this i mean how do you sort of uh, uh, balance these two narratives that are there and what can the industry actually do to remedy uh, i mean play their part in 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 sort of taking care of the migrant concerns so uh, here i'd like to say i don't know who is really vilifying the industry because if you look at what is happening especially to the msmes um, a lot of them have closed down if you go to any industrial area go go to noida go to okla go to any industrial area and see how many of the units are working now so many of the units have closed down because of covid lack of demand and it, it's a it's a spiral right it's a downward spiral so industry is closed down and uh, um, since the government support is not there to pay the wages so i personally am from industry i run an industry unit we supported our workers through the you know we paid our salaries through the period but i can understand if people don't have the wherewithal to really you know if your unit is closed since a year you don't have a market it is difficult to support people in their livelihoods now one thing is that we have to separate the two issues one is of jobs as a whole and the second is of jobs for migrants right so if you're looking at jobs as a whole that basically it's jobs as a whole going down which creates the crisis uh, and it gets exacerbated by the people not having livelihood in that you know not having a place to stay so you see the migration now jobs as a whole um, government is doing something on the credit front covid loans and all that has helped because if an industry you know at least you can live through this period and maybe earn back and give back the money so that is somewhat of a support it would be a better support if you got it at a very low rate or in terms of a grant perhaps because a loan at the end of the day still has to be repaid the second is that i think we need to a lot of new regulations are coming in maybe in reaction to you know some of our npas in the bank and this and you know so the reporting now we talk about ease of doing business but as a business person i can say my reporting levels and all sorts of regulations have gone up tremendously in the last couple of years and become at one point somebody will give up you see the more you will have more and more people dropping off 
or going in the you know the more the regulations are it affects businesses and we in india have long experiences of this that if you have more red tape businesses shrink if you remove it businesses grow and the third i'd like to say is that we need to again think back to you know prioritizing growth because employment and especially for the msme especially for export for the kind of businesses where we have traditional strengths which are large employers so in the early you know when we had liberalization in uh, 91 and all they had given very strong export incentives you know income tax uh, you know no income tax on export income things like that and that had really uh, the growth had uh, we we had seen very high growth in export sectors yes. now we need to rethink you know today because of the way the gst is structured every exporter and i can tell you this from personal experience every exporter has to take a refund from the government there's no automatic way so and those refunds don't come so people have four months working capital stuck five months working capital stuck and it's hampering growth now we don't talk about you you say it's a small policy but then when you look at the impact of something like this it uh, it's tremendous it brings down growth it makes and all this paperwork you know people get tired the way we, you see for crafts people the younger generation doesn't want to get into this sphere because it's so difficult they don't earn similarly in msmes if you take a survey amongst msmes and you try and find out how many of the second generation want to continue you see a lot of people don't so there is a big role still of less red tape of export promotion of offering very concrete incentives for jobs now if we look at migrant jobs then of course we need to create incentives as uh, ranjana ji said we need to create incentives for people to be in the smaller towns or in the villages so that is another thing the government has to go back to thinking of broad basing industry the third thing i'd like to say is that to, in india to produce we don't necessarily need an industrial unit we have a very strong craft tradition we don't need to invest in tools we don't need to invest in you know businesses we don't even need to invest in skills to create businesses we need to create markets and for people who are there in the villages who have skills who have tools who have products who have the raw materials available to them but we need to create good marketing networks and uh, look at how to uh, create demand or how to tweak their product design so that it becomes acceptable to urban india and to the world and this i think the government should look at tying up with major e-commerce portals and seeing how to get the goods out of the villages on e-commerce uh, this would solve a lot of the problems and especially if you work with women artisans see we in a way we are in a very good position because we have the jandhan accounts for the bank we have the aadhar uh, we have uh, mobile phone penetration so a lot of the ground work has already been done if these people can do, sell what they are making sitting in their village you know even if it's a you know water hyacinth bag or whatever there are so many products india has thousands and thousands of products if they can do that they can sell on the e-commerce network the money will come in through the aadhar through their jandhan you could this could solve a lot of our problems it may seem like a small solution but well implemented it could be maybe a gramin level solution now that's a that's a that's a fantastic point you make about creation of uh, markets and nurturing markets and uh, so little focus goes into looking at um, figuring out ways to just link producers to markets and those producers may languish if if the market is not there or or not uh, promoted so that's a fantastic point i'll uh, let's quickly take a couple of questions uh, uh, do we have some questions uh, lined up because i thought uh, and then uh, just hold think we have two questions at least uh 
I think the first one is uh, by Dr. Shrikant Panigrihi. Uh, can we connect him? Yes, please. Uh, my question is to uh, Madam Ranjana. And the uh, question is very simple. Mm, the, uh, uh, we uh, discussed about the uh, structure, uh, structural policy intervention. And, uh, and that, uh, that's a long-term solution. And we need to think seriously uh, to address the core issue. Uh, just uh, one time uh, giving will not help or emergency assistance is not enough. So we need to uh, do some, these uh, unskilled people have also some kind of skills. Uh, like uh, mm, a plumber uh, can do two, three other type ki kind of uh, job at his own village, uh, which is comparatively compatible and not conflicting. Um, like uh, skill mapping of these migrants uh, is extremely important. And uh, this is high time we need to do it. Uh, and the next thing is uh, uh, like uh, immediately to, uh, we are giving them rations, we are giving them longers and foods and all that. But uh, that is a Santa Cruz approach which we discussed. Uh, but the most important thing is we should have some kind of universal Mm, uh, migrant wages, uh, migrant uh, allowance, uh, temporary allowance, until uh, they uh, uh, take up a livelihood, uh, alternative livelihood options uh, to the place where they migrated. And we need to think it in depth and uh, should have a system in place um, in which uh, all the stakeholders have a role, I understand, not necessarily government or industry, uh, but everybody can play a role. Uh, in, in India, we have not thought enough on these issues, uh, whereas even in other BRIC countries like Brazil and uh, others, uh, they have their universal uh, um, uh, allowance uh, system for migration, which they tried and worked out uh, during COVID. And uh, uh, I would like to know more uh, on structural policy interventions and what is the best uh, that is suitable for India. Uh, involving all the stakeholders, uh, uh, which will uh, lead towards a sustainable solution. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Srikant K. Panigrahi uh, from Indian Institute of uh, Sustainable Development. Uh, we are working on social sustainability, environmental sustainability, and economic sustainability to strike a balance so that in our development uh, can be sustainable. So social sustainability is very crucial. So I will uh, request the uh, um, uh, respected panel to highlight. Yeah, I think Ranjanaji, can you respond quickly? Uh, we'll take another question after that. You're on mute, ma'am. I think you're on mute, ma'am. Oh, sorry. He, he had the answer in his question itself. And I totally agree with him. And I think this is, uh, we do need to uh, have engage ourselves with looking at how to, I mean, because it's not us who are discussing for the first time and trying to propose solutions for migration and migration related issues. There have been very, very concrete programs, even for migrant workers in informal sector of the economy. We have in, informal sector commission that was set up. I was part of as advisor of the labor ministry at that point of time when we set up the commission. So I think it's, there are institutions. We do have a lot of ideas there. Uh, at some point of time, Dr. Panigrahi, we can get into a bigger debate about it. But here I will only say that let's involve the institutions which are already there and let's activate them. Let's make them responsible and let the government come up with a more concrete policy. If we're not talking about a small little population. We are talking about one third. 400 million people, 40 crore people of this country. 
And so, you know, there, there, there it cannot be piecemeal solution. It can't be. And uh, just I want to clarify one thing, Odidji, that I'm not meaning by Santa Claus. I didn't mean to really, because I come from civil society and I think we are doing, but I am not happy with the only these, you know, immediate solutions. I want the country now to look at post-COVID and rejig everything that we are we were doing and I think we were doing very wrong and that is why we were in such big trouble. So let's, you know, kind of look at the futuristic thing and Dr. Sab, I will have some detailed discussion with you separately. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I totally agree. I mean, uh, this is a very valid point that we, we can't have one person or one organization being the Santa Claus. There has to be a sustainable structural solution to this. Um, let's move on to the next uh, question. I think this is by uh, Ms. Abha Mishra. Can we patch her through? Yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. And it was a, it's a real uh, great discussions which are happening across. Uh, I am from Orissa and I work with the UNDP. Uh, you know, my question is to the panel. Uh, we have talked about a lot of uh, migration issues and most of the solution is that um, we should start industries or MSMEs or any job uh, opportunity should be there at the village level or the rural areas to encourage uh, um, their staying back and also earning a livelihood. But many a times you would find that um, despite that, there would be migration. And specifically, uh, when we look at migration in terms of getting better remunerations. I move, will move out to US if I get an opportunity because I am uh, I get be better services, I, bet I get uh, better pay scale. How do you uh, view this uh, scenario and what should be done either by the government or the society as a whole in India? I think I think Archana ji, would you like to take a stab at that about uh, you know because the question again is at the heart uh, of the economics behind it. Uh, would you want to? So certainly there will be migration because as an economy grows, changes, there are reasons for some businesses to locate somewhere. You will see migration. Um, what does one do about it? So uh, migration is something which we see in all countries. It's not just a uniquely Indian thing. I think government has to make sure that cities which are there, uh, there should be basic facilities available to all the residents of a city, migrant or, you know, you have to set up policies for cheap housing, for, you know, create systems as uh, Atulji said, you can create incentives and you can create uh, social entrepreneurship or uh, startups which are looking at how do you provide people coming in cheap housing? How do you provide them basic facilities? How do you provide a pathway to settling? Because a settled family is better than a single individual male member working. So these pathways have to be thought of. You, migration per se is not a bad thing. Of course, emotionally, it is good to continue where you are, but societies change and grow and migration is a natural part of growth of a society. So you have to, not just for migrants, but all people in a city, how do you provide basic facilities? If you do that, then a lot of these issues and a lot of the trauma associated with migration would go away. I want to add to what Archana ji is saying. Uh, I think we need to separate migration from migrants. Uh, there is distress migration, there is aspirational migration. I'm assuming 80% of the people on this call would be in cities that they didn't grow up in or called homes, right? We're all migrants. Aspirational migration is not a problem, right? Me wanting a job in US and going there for better economic opportunities uh, is, uh, uh, is a natural societal and it happens. When you're forcing people to leave their houses because they, they don't have food at home and any livelihood at home, that is not okay as a, as, a, as a country at this day and age of our evolution, right? 75th year of our independence we are celebrating. 
forcing people to leave the home where they grew up in where the families lived forever uh, is not an okay thing right i mean dallas migrates to new york even today that doesn't mean that people are dying of hunger in dallas and that's why they are migrating they like new york life they want to experience it they go so as a, i think as a as a as a country our priority is that people should have basic dignified life opportunities livelihood opportunities uh, inclusion wherever they are is important it will still have migration we can't solve for it and i think that doesn't sort of uh, you know uh, doing that in rural areas doesn't mean that we shouldn't focus on creating tier 4 city city infrastructure supporting people where they land because both are realities we have to live with india will have a net migration of large number of people given the demographic dependency on agri is too much uh, but uh, i think there is a responsibility both moral uh, civil and economic to create opportunities in rural areas while we focus on uh, post migration support for people where they land uh, here i'd like to say something as atul ji said if you look india has about 35% urban population but even china which we can compare with because it has a similar size and uh, you know number of people they have about 60% people in urban areas and if you go to uh, european countries you know the percentages are still higher so i don't think we will be able to buck the trend of development across the world right we are going to be looking at larger and larger number of people living in cities whether it's going to be a few mega cities or a large number of smaller cities then has to be something that the government will have a role in uh, this you know influencing but migration is going to be there and is going to stay yes sir, that's absolutely correct you know uh, we still have in terms of urbanization much lower levels of uh, migration if we do urbanize at the rate at we hope to urbanize migration levels will increase how much of that uh, will be out of distress and how many of those migrants will remain in duress that's something that we need to solve for um uh, before i invite uh, uh, mr siddharth notial who's a partner at umidyar network india i would like to just thank all the panelists it's been a fascinating discussion uh, it's uh, an amorphous idea not easy to answer uh, these questions uh, there's no one set on uh, question that we are answering but thanks a lot for your time and i would like to now uh, invite siddharth for his uh, concluding remarks thank you adit and thank you for moderating this session so ably uh, thank you as well to the participants dr ranjana arshna ji vinod ji atul ji for your insights i also wanted to thank anand for his very inspiring discussion with sonu uh, which set the tone for this uh, for this evening uh, from the discussion is clear uh, migrants and msmes are probably the most impacted by covid uh, on the back of this realization sometime in 2020 omedia network india sent up the set up the resolve initiative with the idea of building solutions for msmes and migrant workers uh, this is a long recovery process will require entrepreneurs thought leaders and policy makers to come together to find lasting solutions and as part of this entire mix of activities and entrepreneurs that we funded the indian express think series is a very important part of our resolve initiative Uh, over the last many sessions we've discussed solutions on healthcare on employment uh or long lasting solutions for the for the migrant crisis and providing services to them that would make them equal citizens of our country but as we took stock over the last few weeks we also realized that migrants are falling out of our national discourse all over again and that really is a bad place for us to be as uh, sonud mentioned in his initial discussion uh the crisis last year actually humanized the migrants for for the rest of the country uh, it brought their pain in front of us and made their pain ours and while it was completely avoidable and we hope we never have a situation like this happen again it made us realize that the country was actually giving a, giving a raw deal to our migrants and it led to a bunch of immediate support activities to improve the lot of the migrant workers but now as we look at solutions i think like many participants mentioned the immediate solutions are more in the here and now for this to be a lasting change we need to have solutions that are more long term uh, solutions which civil society itself will not solve for 
It has to involve entrepreneurs uh, and most important policymakers and governments. And that will take a, a long time and a sustained movement to make sure that we get to that uh, groundswell of emotion and support that we can make this happen. The problem with migrants going out of the national discourse is that immediacy gets lost. And the fear is that this opportunity to make lasting change will go away. So to that extent, it's super important that we keep this movement going, we keep these discussions going and make sure that this opportunity that's come because the migrant crisis has brought the plight of migrants to light. Uh, we use that to create those long lasting solutions that, that are clear mm. to many people, but need sustained effort to make sure they, they actually come true. Uh, as part of that same uh, process of making sure this movement continues, I want to reiterate that the microsite on migration that Indian Express is hosting together with Media Network India, that is now uh, open to take submissions from researchers across the country who are working on migrant related issues. Uh, so I'd encourage people to contribute there so that your work can get more visibility and more info people can be part of this to make sure we can make this sustained change happen. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank everybody for their participation and had that back to Udit and the organizers uh, for the final formalities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Siddharth, so much. Um, and many thanks uh, to our presenting partner, Omidyar Network India, for helping us put this series together. Um, uh, everyone who joined us today, uh, we hope you had a, found something of value in the discussion as well as the interview. Uh, we will, of course, continue the series focusing on specific aspects of migration like education, housing, labor laws. Uh, this is all in a bid to get a better understanding of what challenges lie ahead of us and to find some direction. Uh, we will be in touch with you as we announce the next event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye, everyone.